the uh, device to be opened very readily, but uh, the wire broke and uh, uh, a, co a copper wire had been used. This next scene is of the 2G424 hour experiment. Uh, this was an interesting uh, uh, effort to see the possibility of a human taking uh, long duration uh, elevated acceleration. Um, the uh, trip to Mars uh, that we're now thinking about may be a six month coasting orbit trip with the velocity uh, uh, increased uh, primarily by the booster rockets in the first 10 minutes or so, and then by gravitation the rest of the time. Uh, at 2G, instead of taking six months to go to Mars, one would go uh, in 40 hours. Uh, at 2G, accelerating halfway and decelerating halfway, one would go to the uh, moon in four and a half hours. The centrifuge is pre-positioned uh, with the uh, outer gimbal at uh, the 60 degree angle so that as the centrifuge uh, picks up its uh, radial speed, the resultant acceleration of 2G is perpendicular to the floor. <coughs> uh, the, this kind of experiment had never been done by a human for this kind of duration at least. And so it was very interesting to see what the physiological effects uh, would be. Can man indeed accelerate steadily at 2G? As the centrifuge comes on up to speed, uh, the subject gets into the middle of the seat. And uh, it was found quite possible to do, do ordinary cooking procedures, um, to take notes, to uh, run a calculator, um, the subject observed his own temperature and blood pressure, but in addition, an electrocardiograph recording was continuously monitored outside of the uh, capsule. It was possible to stand up, to walk around, uh, to eat, uh, to fry an egg, in fact, and uh, to do the variety of uh, things that would make a space flight uh, quite uh, comfortable. However, this is a centrifuge, and if one moves one's head abruptly, uh, it is uh, disorienting. You get the Coriolis illusions of the multiple uh, vector rotation problem, and uh, this can be uh, nauseating. Uh, in fact, I exp explored the thresholds of nausea uh, and found the rate of head motion for the rate of centrifuge motion that would be acceptable. Um, objects, of course, weigh twice as much as they do in the normal in, uh, 1G environment. And uh, in fact, the chin uh, felt heavier as one. But otherwise, one could do uh, most things, uh, although one quickly learned not to move the head abruptly. It was possible to get to sleep. Uh, there was uh, symphony music going on in the centrifuge for uh, most of the time. Uh, uh, the external monitoring by uh, Commander Gil Webb of the electrocardiogram and by the engineer uh, observing the centrifuge in its rotation uh, made sure that all was going well. Again, one could stand up. It was as if one were standing with someone else on one's back. But uh, although I could calculate uh, the speeds and durations at, at this point, you can see that there is a growing uh, stress that is developing for, from this uh, uh, level of uh, centrifugation. However, at the end of the program, after 24 hours, the centrifuge was brought to a stop. And the gimbals were repositioned.
And I was uh, quite happy to be able to get up and uh, walk out of the centrifuge. That's the reclining chair for my living room. My wife wasn't totally happy about that, but it worked very nicely, reclining at about 45 degrees for much of the time. It was impressive how light I felt as I came out of the centrifuge. Uh, I, I'll take a little jump here to just illustrate that. <laughs> but otherwise, I felt uh, quite good. And there was no obvious uh, residual uh, problem. This now is the uh, more advanced restraint. Gil Webb is climbing into Flanagan and Gray, uh, Gray's Iron Maiden water restraint system. Uh, Flanagan uh, developed this system, uh, recognizing that if the blood cannot pool in the dependent parts of the body under acceleration, uh, the uh, distribution of the blood continues in a more normal-like fashion. Uh, and so, after doing some initial tank work, uh, he went on to uh, explore uh, the Iron Maiden that had the completely closed uh, system. The lung, however, is still filled with air in this uh, system, and therefore the gradients are uh, averaged out across the lung, and that is the limitation in centrifuging a, an animal or a human with a, a lung cavity. In the transverse form, the, the gradient uh, is not um, of such a distance, but what uh, uh, going on up, uh, Flanagan went up to uh, 31 G in a 25 second uh, Haversine, and I think Gil Webb uh, was close to that same level. You can see the water come up over the face mask and over the face. The subject was breathing oxygen, uh, and it was pressurized at, at a level to allow him to continue to breathe until uh, the centrifuge began. And then uh, the uh, procedure was to shut off the, the volume, uh, keep a constant volume of the respiratory system uh, during the uh, high acceleration. You can see the speed of the centrifuge in this uh, set of uh, pictures, showing the, uh, also the duration of this particular run. <coughs> this, of course, is an outboard facing uh, G, that is minus G sub X, uh, and is really to help develop the, uh, the technology. There is the concern, however, that uh, air emb embolism across the lung um, blood vessel interface uh, could be a danger, and uh, this work was not further pursued after uh, some uh, beginning chimpanzee experiments. Fish can take up to 10,000 G with, uh, for those uh, uh, species of fish that do not have swim bladders. So indeed, if you're in a uniform uh, water density environment, uh, the displacement of the surrounding liquid just matches the displacement of your internal uh, materials, and uh, the distortions produced by acceleration are minimized. Again, the principle is that it is not acceleration that harms but distortion produced by the acceleration. the controls responding to lights uh, and uh, any uh, feeling of discomfort that would have caused the centrifuge to have been stopped earlier. Here's Gil Webb on the left and Flanagan on the right. 
and Gil is in good shape. The Iron Maiden was supported on the arm of the centrifuge rather than in the gondola. So here he comes off the arm. And here's the centrifuge building, the Aviation Medical Acceleration Laboratory, now in Warminster, Pennsylvania. We used to call it Johnsville in the 60s. This is an early uh, set of films of the Canadian centrifuge, and I put it in here just to uh, because of its historic interest. This now is, is positive G sub Z acceleration, that is the uh, blood is draining toward the feet without significant protection, and uh, the person goes unconscious. Uh, you can see that this can lead to some clonic uh, disorientation. At Johnsville, we stopped the uh, centrifuge as soon as the peripheral light response was lost, and we did not go as far into the uh, further unconsciousness uh, as apparently the Canadians did. So that these convulsions are not, were not commonly seen on the Johnsville centrifuge. This again is the Canadian low pressure chamber work uh, just after World War II in uh, Toronto, showing the uh, convulsive effects of uh, hypoxia. I'm sorry, this is 1942, during World War II. The uh, lower uh, figure is the accelerometer, 1, 2, th 3G, 4G, 5G, and holding at 5G, and he goes out, and they hold it a little bit longer. It's still 5G, 4G, 3G, 2G, back to 1G, and he comes out. Um, at Johnsville, we stopped more abruptly, uh, that is, reduced the acceleration uh, more abruptly as soon as he lost the peripheral light uh, response.